Jefferson Finnis Davis was born on June 3, 1808 in Fairview, Kentucky. During Davis's youth, his family moved twice, in 1811 to St. Mary Parish, Louisiana, and less than a year later to Wilkinson County, Mississippi. Three of Davis's older brothers served in the War of 1812. In 1813, Davis began his education at the Wilkinson Academy in the small town of Woodville, near the family cotton plantation. Two years later, Davis entered the Catholic School of St. Thomas at St. Rose Priory, a school operated by the Dominican Order in Washington County, Kentucky. At the time, he was the only Protestant student at the school. In 1818, Davis returned to Mississippi studying at, the, studying at Jefferson College at Washington. Three years later, in 1821, he returned to Kentucky where he studied at Transylvania University in Lexington. At the time, these colleges were more like a modern high school. His father Samuel died on July 4, 1824 when Jefferson was 16 years old. Davis got an appointment and attended the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York, starting in late 1824. While there, he was placed under house arrest for a role in the eggnog riot during Christmas 1826. Cadets smuggled whiskey into the academy to make eggnog, and more than one-third of the cadets were involved in the incident. In June, in June 1828, Davis graduated 23rd in a class of 33. Following graduation, 2nd Lieutenant Davis was assigned to the 1st Infantry Regiment and was stationed at Fort Crawford, Prairie de Chien, Michigan Territory. Zachary Taylor, a future President of the United States, had assumed command shortly before Davis arrived in early 1829. In March 1832, Davis returned to Mississippi. He was still in Mississippi during the Black Hawk War, but returned to the fort in August. At the conclusion of the war, Colonel Zachary Taylor assigned him to escort Black Hawk to prison. Davis fell in love with Sarah Knox Taylor, daughter of his commanding officer Zachary Taylor. Both Sarah and Davis sought Taylor's permission to marry. Taylor refused, as he did not wish his daughter to have the difficult life of a military wife on frontier army posts. Davis's own experience led him to appreciate Taylor's objection. David hesitated to leave. His desire for Sarah overcame this, and he resigned his commission in a letter dated April 20th, 1835. He had arranged for the letter to be sent to the War Department. He had made no mention to Taylor of his intention to resign. Against his former commander's wishes, on June 17th, he married Sarah in Louisville, Kentucky. His resignation became effective June 30th. Davis's older brother Joseph had been very successful and owned Hurricane Plantation and 1,800 acres of adjoining land along the Mississippi River on a peninsula 20 miles south of Vicksburg, Mississippi. Wanting to have his youngest brother and his wife nearby, Joseph gave use of some of his land to Jefferson, who eventually developed Burrfield Plantation there, though Joseph retained the title. In August 1835, Jefferson and Sarah traveled south to his sister Anna's home in West Valencia Parish, Louisiana. The plantation was known as Locust Grove. Their goal was to spend the hot summer months in the countryside away from the river floodplain. Unfortunately, both of them contracted either malaria or yellow fever. Sarah died at the age of 21 on September 15, 1835, after just three months of marriage. In late 1835, Davis sailed from New Orleans to Havana, Cuba to help restore his health. Bored and feeling somewhat better, Davis booked passage on a ship to New York, USA, then continued to Washington, D.C., where he visited his old schoolmate, George Wallace Jones. In 1840, Davis became involved in politics when he attended a Democratic Party meeting in Vicksburg and, to his surprise, was chosen as a delegate to the party state convention in Jackson. In 1844, Davis was sent to the party convention for a third time, and his interest in politics deepened. He was selected as one of six presidential electors for the 1844 presidential election and campaigned effectively throughout Mississippi for the Democratic candidate James K. Polk. In 1844, Davis met 17-year-old Verena Banks Howell, the granddaughter of New Jersey Governor Richard Howell. Within a month of their meeting, the 35-year-old widower Davis had asked Verena to marry him, and they became engaged despite her parents' initial concerns about his age and politics. They were married on February 26, 1845. During this time, Davis was persuaded to become a candidate for the United States House of Representatives and began canvassing for the election. In 1846, the Mexican-American War began. Davis resigned his house seat in early June and raised a volunteer regiment, the 155th Infantry Regiment, becoming its colonel under the command of his former father-in-law, General Zachary Taylor. Colonel Davis sought to arm the regiment with the M1841 Mississippi rifle. At this time, smoothbore muskets were still the primary infantry weapon, 
and any unit with rifles was considered special and designated as such. Davis and his regiment were armed with the rifles, making it particularly effective in combat. In September, Davis participated in the Battle of Monterey, during which he led a successful charge at La Teneria Fort. On February 22, 1847, Davis fought bravely at the Battle of Buena Vista and was shot in the foot. In recognition for Davis's bravery and initiative, Taylor is reputed to have said, My daughter, sir, was a better judge of men than I was. Honoring Davis's war service, Governor Brown of Mississippi appointed him to the vacant position of United States Senator. Davis took his temporary seat on December 5th in January 1848. He was elected by the state legislature to serve the remaining two years of the term. In December, during the 30th United States Congress, Davis was made a regent of the Smithsonian Institute and began serving on the Committee of Military Affairs and the Library Committee. The Senate made Davis chairman of the Committee of Military Affairs on December 3, 1849. During the first session of the 31st United States Congress, on December 29th, he was elected to a full six-year term. Davis had not served a year when he resigned in September 1851 to run for the governorship of Mississippi on the issue of the Compromise of 1850, which he opposed. He was defeated by fellow Senator Henry Stuart Foote by 999 votes. Left without a political office, Davis continued his political activity. In the weeks leading up to the presidential election of 1852, he campaigned in numerous southern states for Democratic candidates Franklin Pierce and William R. King. Franklin Pierce won the presidential election and in 1853 made Davis his Secretary of War. In this capacity, Davis began the Pacific Railroad surveys in order to determine various possible routes for the proposed transcontinental railroad. He promoted the Gadsden Purchase of today's southern Arizona from Mexico. The Pierce administration agreed and the land was purchased on December 1853. He saw the size of the regular army as insufficient to fulfill its mission and maintained that salaries would have to be increased, something which had not occurred for 25 years. Congress agreed to increase the pay scale. Davis also introduced general usage of the rifles he had used successfully during the Mexican-American War. As a result, both the morale and capability of the army was improved. He became involved in public works when Pierce gave him responsibility for construction of the Washington Aqueduct and an expansion of the U.S. Capitol, both of which he managed closely. Davis believed that each state was sovereign and had an unquestionable right to succeed from the Union. At the same time, he counseled delay among his fellow Southerners because he did not think the North would permit a peaceful exercise of the right to succession. Having served as Secretary of War under President Pierce, he also knew that the South lacked the military and naval resources necessary for defense in a war. Following the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860, however, events accelerated. South Carolina adopted an ordinance of succession on December 20, 1860, and Mississippi did so on January 9, 1861. On January 21st, the day Davis called the saddest day of my life, he delivered a farewell address to the United States Senate, resigned, and returned to Mississippi. On January 23, 1861, Davis was made a Major General of the Army of Mississippi. On February 9th, a constitutional convention met in Montgomery, Alabama, and considered Jefferson Davis and Robert Toombs of Georgia as possible Confederate president. Davis, who had widespread support from six of the seven states, easily won. He was inaugurated on February 18, 1861. Davis was the first choice because of his strong political and military credentials. Several forts in Confederate territory remained in Union hands. Davis sent a commission to Washington with an offer to pay for any federal property on southern soil, as well as the southern portion of the national debt, but Lincoln refused to meet with the commissioners. On March 1, 1861, Davis appointed General P.G.T. Beauregard to command all Confederate troops in the vicinity of Charleston, South Carolina where state officials prepared to take possession of Fort Sumter. Beauregard bombarded the fort on April 12th. The Confederates launched an artillery attack on Fort Sumter until it surrendered. No one was killed in the artillery duel, but the attack on the U.S. fortress meant the American Civil War had begun. When Virginia joined the Confederacy, Davis moved his government to Richmond in May 1861. In June 1862, in his most successful action, Davis assigned General Robert E. Lee to replace the wounded Joseph E. Johnston in command of the Army of Northern Virginia, the main Confederate army in the Western theater. Given the Confederacy's limited resources compared with the Union, Davis decided that the Confederacy would have to fight mostly on 
the strategic defensive. He maintained a mostly defensive outlook throughout the war. When Lee lost at Gettysburg, Vicksburg simultaneously fell. In March 1865, General Order 14 provided for enlisting slaves into the army with a promise of freedom for service. The idea had been suggested years earlier. On April 3rd, with Union troops under Ulysses S. Grant poised to capture Richmond, Davis escaped to Danville, Virginia. On about April 12th, Davis received Robert E. Lee's letter announcing surrender. On April 14th, Lincoln was shot, dying the next day. Davis expressed regret at his death. He later said that he believed Lincoln would have been less harsh with the South than his successor. Along with their hand-picked escort led by Given Campbell, Davis and his wife Verena Davis were captured by Union forces on May 10th in Oringville, Georgia. On May 19th, 1865, Davis was imprisoned at Fortress Monroe on the coast of Virginia. Davis was allowed no visitors and no books except the Bible. He became sick and the attending physician warned that his life was in danger, but this treatment continued for some months until late autumn when he was finally given better quarters. Davis was indicted for treason while in prison. Although Davis wanted such a trial for himself, there were no treason trials against anyone as it was felt they would probably not succeed and would impede reconciliation. After two years of imprisonment, Davis was released on bail of $100,000, which was posted by prominent citizens included Jared Smith, a former member of the Secret Six who had supported abolitionist John Brown. Davis went to Montreal, Canada to join his family which had fled there earlier and lived in Lennoxville, Quebec until 1868. In 1869, Davis became president of the Carolina Life Insurance Company in Memphis, Tennessee, where he resided at the Peabody Hotel. Davis completed the rise and fall of the Confederate government. Davis's reputation among ex-Confederates was restored by the book and by his warm re reception on his tour of the region in 1886 and 1887. Davis completed a short history of the Confederate States of America in October 1889. While in New Orleans, he was caught in a sleety rain, and on the steamboat trip upriver, he had a severe cold. Two doctors came aboard further south and found he had acute bronchitis, complicated by malaria. Davis remained in bed but was stable for the next two weeks. However, he took a turn for the worse in early December. Just when he appeared to be approving, he lost consciousness on the evening of December 5th and died at 12.45 a.m. on Friday, December 6th, 1889, in the presence of several friends and with his hand in Verena's. His funeral was one of the largest in the South. Jefferson Davis served in many roles. As a soldier, he was a brave and resourceful. As a soldier, he was brave and resourceful. As a politician, he served as a United States Senator. As a politician, he never completed a full term in any elected position. As President of the Confederate States of America, he is widely viewed as an ineffective wartime leader. Although the task of defending the Confederacy against a much stronger Union would have been a great challenge for any leader, Davis's performance in this role is considered poor. 